you ever have a nickname uh, when you were a child growing up or even as an adult? Uh, in my life, I've had several nicknames. Uh, when I was in elementary school, my family members called me Fat Boy because I struggled with my weight. Uh, when I was in college, some of my friends called me Gunner Chu because they thought I was too competitive about uh, school and academics. And uh, different nicknames uh, are engraved in my memory uh, throughout my life. And uh, I think nicknames are very important. Names are very important. And I want to share more about this after today's scripture reading. Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give him some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. From today's passage, I want to focus on the last verse, verse 17. It says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Uh, in the 1960s, there was a boxer here in America who had a religious conversion. This story would be perfect if the conversion was a conversion to Christianity, to the true faith. But in reality, this person converted to uh, uh, Islam and the black Muslim movement here in America. And his name was Cassius Clay. But when he converted uh, several years later, he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. And his name was very important to him. And he became one of the greatest boxers in all history. And he's known as one of the greatest trash talkers in all of sports. Uh, when he won the, the, the title at a very young age, at the age of 22, he's very well known when he would say, I am the greatest. And he said, I shook the world. And he said, I must be good looking. And anyways, he's known for his trash talking. And uh, he would predict when he would uh, knock out his opponents, he'd, he'd say, uh, I float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and Sonny Liston, you're going down in round three. So anyways, my favorite line of his is when he was fighting, um, he was fighting someone named Ernie Terrell. And prior to the fight, Ernie Terrell and him were having their verbal exchanges, but Ali was really offended because Ernie Terrell refused to call him by his new name. And Ernie Terrell said, you're not Ali, your name is not Muhammad Ali, your name is Cassius Clay. And this made Ali so upset. And uh, during the fight, uh, people noticed that they said that this was the most punishment Ali gave to another person. And he allowed Terrell to stand for 15 rounds. But for the full 15 rounds, he punished him and uh, mangled his face and humiliated him. 
And as he was punching him, he kept yelling, What's my name? What's my name? And uh, after the fight, a, a very uh, well-known um, commentator named Howard Cosell said to Ali, That was such a cruel, cruel fight. You tortured this man. Why did you do it? And Ali said he refused to acknowledge my name. Now, this story would be perfect if, if Ali converted to Christianity, but Ali knew that in his conversion, in his identity as a person, his name was so important. And when people refused to acknowledge his name, he took offense. And we need to realize there is power in our names. The, the names that we received were not by chance. Uh, there was a reason behind it, and if we have, uh, if our parents were uh, Christians who prayerfully considered our names, there's an even deeper meaning behind it, and there's a reason why we were given those names. There's a significance, and there's a re and it's very powerful, and even our nicknames growing up and as adults, even something that seems so insignificant as a nickname has great importance. And that's why this passage is so fascinating because the Bible talks about us receiving a new name. Even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there are men and women of God who were given new names. Um, Abraham became Abraham. Uh, Sarah, uh, in the New Testament, um, Peter received his name. Uh, which matched his character and his persona and the role that he would play as the rock on which uh, God would build his church. In the Old Testament, one of the greatest name changes is Jacob. His name means meant deceiver. And God changed his name to Israel, which means he who struggles with God. That was a radical transformation in the meaning of his name, but more importantly, it was a radical transformation in his character. He went from being the sneaky and sly and snake-like deceiver to being he who struggles with God and overcomes. And he becomes the father of the nation of Israel, uh, which bore his name, his namesake. And uh, so there's so much power and meaning in the name. And I want to just look at the, the last half of this verse 17. To the one who's victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. This is such a powerful gift and a powerful message that to people who are spiritually victorious, for those who persevere in the faith and finish strong and receive the crown of life, we will receive this special gift that God would give us, a, a, it says a white stone, and it has our new name, which has a new meaning and a new significance for who we are in Christ, who God created us to be, and the role that we are to play in God's larger kingdom. And it's powerful because it says this new name will be known only to the one who receives it. There is this um, intimacy that God has planned our future, our future roles, our, future, our character, our, who we are as people, our identity. And in it, included in all this, this amazing gift that He will give us this new name. What an amazing gift that God, the creator of the universe, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, has the time and the effort and the, the love to personally uh, pick out a new name for all of his saints, all of his children. And I only hope that we would persevere and finish strong and re receive this amazing gift. Let's pray. 
God, we want to be part of that number. We want to be one of the saints of God who perseveres till the end, who lives in eternity with you, and who receives this amazing gift, this new identity and new name. Allow us to receive it as grateful children. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen.